guys welcome back to my channel and to this new video today's video i wanted to do a pantry clean out so it's the end of the month last weekend of february i wanted to clean out some of the bits and bobs that i have lying around left over from the month to start the month of march afresh so pantry clean out let's take a look at what we have in the fridge freezer pantry and come up with some ideas now, granted, I do have quite a bit of stuff lying around, so we'll see what we can use up and come up with some recipes to clear up some space for the new month. Let's get started. All right, first things first, let's see what's up in the fridge. There's quite a, a bit going on. So at the top, I have some things that are still good for a bit, so I'm not gonna use them up. Here we have some puff pastry, so I think, yeah, let's not break everything. So I think I'm going to use one of these, some puff pastry. I'm going to make a salty tart. I've made this in the past, so uh, that's kind of an idea I have. Then here I have some vegan cheese. This is going to be used up. I have some ideas for maybe a sauce or mac and cheese because I have some pasta I need to use up as well. So there's that. This is some soaked cashew, soaked cashew I have lying around for a, a week or so. So this also complements my idea of mac and cheese. So I think these two will go well with some nutritional yeast I have and some macaroni I have to use up. Some leftovers here. Okay, so this is watermelon, ignore. Here, oula, my fridge is telling me I need to close it in a minute. So here I have some tahini dressing I have to use up. I have here some Sorry, I have some roasted veggies left over, so I think I'm going to cut this up in small bits and use it in the salty tart I'm going to make with the puff pastry. Then here I have some falafels left over. I bought this frozen and I baked them in the oven. They're, they're quite nice on salad or in a sandwich, really good. And here we have some tofu, so I'm going to use also some of the tofu that is not left over. I recently got it. I always get some tofu when I go to the Asian supermarket. So this is going to be some protein source for the recipes of this week. Now in the vegetable section, so I have this baby butternut. I was thinking of making a soup with it. So that's the idea here. Here I have some salad that I've washed and storing in this, uh, in this box. So this still goes with the falafels and the tahini dressing. Um, then I have here some leftover broccoli that I may use up in a stir fry along these mushrooms that I got recently. We used half of those in a fried rice recipe and I'm going to use the rest now in a stir fry. That's the idea. Um, what else? Here I have quite a few condiments. These last for a while. Sorry, fridge, just a moment. Um, here I have some dried, some dried tomatoes. Here I have some homemade panko crumbs. So basically I had some stale bread that I blitzed in the blender. So I'm thinking of using this up in the uh, mac and cheese basically that I'm going to make. I have these cherries left over from a cake recipe I made a while back for the channel. Some jam from my Nana. Um, still, still good, so we're going to use this up and I'm going to use some of this soy cream here for the salty uh, tart I was mentioning earlier. So that's the fridge. Let's see what we have in the freezer. So freezer, well here we have some ice cream. This is some vegan ice cream, we haven't opened it so this can stay for a little longer. We have here some leftover gyoza. So this, I think I'll keep it, it's really easy and um easy and quick lunch to make so i'll keep this for a little longer i think here i have some frozen bread this also stays for a long for, for a while these are recent additions some spring rolls and edamame so i'm not going to be using this up i have here some celery okay frozen cut up celery from last video if you remember so i may use that for the soup okay also some frozen uh, pita bread, Lebanese bread. So I may use this up for the soup as well. What else have we got here? I think that's it. And then, what else? Whoopsie. So we have, what is this? Okay, this is some 
coconut milk. So this is uh, actually a tip for you. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Coconut milk leftover frozen in some ice uh, shapes. And then I keep it like so. And I just throw these in my curries or in my soups. And I may use some of this up in the soup that I'm trying to make. I have here a small amount of berries left over. So maybe we'll make a cake for the week or something. I have here some Beyond Minced Meat that is still frozen. I was planning on doing a lasagna. Maybe not this week, we'll see. And I have an open packet of green peas. So maybe I use this up, uh, we'll see. I'll have to think about it, but I was thinking of making like a healthier version of the mac and cheese. In other words, adding some peas, so some greenery, vegetables, protein and so on. So I have to close this now because it is freezing. Okay, let's take a look at the pantry. As you can see, there's a lot going on. Obviously all the canned and jar, canned goods and jars, I'm not gonna touch. There's quite a bit of pasta here. I have here some of these penne. I also have this macaroni package that I got for a while. And I was thinking of using this up with the mac and cheese. So that was basically my main idea here. Uh, what else? Uh, the rest is really can can stay for a while. I have some pesto here. Yeah, this the rest doesn't really require cleaning up. There's some ramen here for a quick lunch. My husband loves this. Um, but we have here some other things that have to go. Okay, this. What is it? Um, this is me what is this some noodles guys can you see voila some noodles so half a packet of noodles i can use this in the stir fry with the veggies and the tofu and also half a packet of uh pinto beans here so i'm going to go ahead and soak these tonight and cook them tomorrow that way we have a stew a bean stew for the week and those are kind of the main ideas I have. Here I have some other um, noodles that are not open. So I can save these or some basmati rice that is still in its package. So there you go. From this pantry, I'm going to pull out the noodles, the beans, and these macaroni for the mac and cheese. There's also this section of my pantry that has quite a few things. Um, coffee, sugar, these are staples that I always have on hand. Rice, obviously. Here we have some of the nutritional yeast I'm going to use for the mac and cheese. So use some of this up. Popcorn kernels or corn kernel kernels. So we're going to make some popcorn tonight. It's Saturday night, movie night. So we're going to use up some of that. And I always have some of these lentils on hand. And this is also going to go into the soup that I have in mind to add a little bit of protein. There's also some risotto rice here in the back. Oh, let's not break everything. Jesus Christ. Voila. Here we have some risotto rice. I've had it for a while. I've been meaning to use it. I don't know if I'll manage to use it this time around, but it definitely needs to go sometime in the next weeks. So that's my last pantry I wanted to show you. So now that I've gone over all the stuff that I want to use up, I have written everything up here in my bullet journal, my bullet journal guys. So I have come up with four, five, six recipes. We'll see how many we get in this video. So first of all, we have the butternut lentil soup. So that's something I want to make butternut squash that is. Then the stir fry with the noodles. I really want to use this up. The mac and cheese. So I've never made mac and cheese before with the homemade cashew nut sauce. So this would be a nice challenge. So I'm quite excited to try that. I'm going to look up a recipe. I'm not going to wing it. I mean, I'm going to wing it quite a bit, but still I want some recipe just as an inspiration. Then we have the berries I wanted to use up. So I'll just make a cake or some muffins for the week. The beans, okay, the beans, they really are no brainer. I just soak them tonight and boil them tomorrow with some herbs and spices. And that way I can freeze half and use the rest either in a, in a stew or in, in burgers, any anything like that. And the salty tart I wanted to make 
maybe for dinner tonight with the side of salad, the salad that I didn't show you, but it was in the fridge. Voila! So let's see if we get everything in this video and let's get cooking. Okay, so I have the beans soaking in here for tomorrow and now getting ready to prepare the soup. So I'm going to cut this up, this uh, tiny butternut squash. I'm going to keep the peel. Normally you can use it and I'm going to blend everything eventually. So that's fine. I have a clove of garlic and a shallot, some of that frozen, whoopsie, frozen celery. In terms of spices, you can use pretty much everything. Here I have some paprika, black pepper, Italian seasoning, and some turmeric, aka curcuma here in France. And I'm also going to use one vegetable bouillon and a little bit of these lentils that I'm going to rinse before adding to the soup. Now, let's cut this baby up and then I'm going to add actually the coconut cubes at the end when all the veggies are cooked. All right, let's get started with the soup and the aromatics first. So celery, garlic, and some shallots. I'll let those steam and then I'm going to add the butternut squash. In the meantime, while I'm preparing the soup, I'm also going to fry some of the tofu. So I have one block of tofu sliced up here. I always get my tofu from the Asian supermarket. It's really my favorite, the best and the best price also. Even though prices have gone up quite a bit in the last months, this tofu is still quite affordable, so 4 euros um, the kilo, more or less. And what I like to do is season it with this togurashi spice. So it's a little bit uh, spicy, it's really nice. I fry it, I season it on both sides, and then I deglaze it with some soy sauce. This has become my favorite way of preparing tofu. I prepare it and then use it for stir fries or even for just sandwiches, basically. In parallel, you can see I'm making progress with the soup. I've just added all the spices. I want them to toast a little bit before adding the butternut squash. So here's the butternut squash that I've added. I've added also a little bit of water to, to help steam the butternut squash. And I also have some boiling water in the kettle to add to the soup. Regarding the tofu, I'm just flick, flipping, flipping them here. And I'm also going to add some more togurashi spice on top of, uh, of the other side of the tofu, basically. I've become quite obsessed with this togurashi spice, I must admit. I got a huge bag before Christmas and distributed it to my family as a Christmas gift, basically. I bought small jars and poured some of the togurashi spice in the small jars. So voila, Christmas low-cost idea, a present idea. Uh, here for the soup, I'm just adding the lentils and I'm just going to top it off with some extra boiling water and add also the vegetable seasoning. And that will be it, guys. I'm just going to let the soup simmer, let the lentils uh, cook, let the vegetables cook, and then blitz everything with my blender. This vegetable soup is something I've prepared pretty much every week uh, over the winter, just varying the vegetables. The base is always the same, but I vary the vegetables, okay? You can use carrots, you can use sweet potatoes, you can use other types of pumpkins. It's really very versatile and I always, always add red lentils just because I want to add extra protein and a little bit of coconut milk. So that's really easy, really affordable meal that is quite wholesome and goes really well with homemade croutons. And now let's deglaze the tofu with the soy sauce. And now we're pretty much done, guys. I think the soup is also... I'm just going to let it simmer and it will be done in 20 minutes or so. So we are quite ready with these two meals. So the tofu is ready. I have it here. I'm going to slice it up tomorrow for the stir fry with the noodles. The soup is simmering. The butternut is already quite tender. I'm going to add now some coconut cubes and I may top it off with a little bit of uh, boiling water eventually. Let's add six or seven. And I have maybe one portion left for um, maybe curry next weekend, something like that. And voila, then I will blend it either with my blender or, or with an immersion blender. And something I also like to add in the soups is some tomato paste or some leftover 
uh, tomato based pasta sauce that actually works quite nice as well. So I'm going to let it simmer and move on to the savory tart. Okay, so I have some of these leftover roasted vegetables that I'm going to chop up finely and then prepare the mixture that is going to go on top of the puff pastry. So basically first I will make um, the mixture, then the puff pastry I'll just bake it for like 10 minutes to toast it slightly and then add the filling which I'm going to prepare now. The filling is going to be the roasted vegetables, the soy cream, I'm going to grate some of that vegan cheese and as a protein source I thought I'll try this canned vegan tuna I got a while back from a supermarket. This was a impulse buy shall we say. It's a German brand called Vegans. Let me show you close up. So it's this German brand Vegans vegan tuna. Obvi the ingredients are in German so I can't really read but it says here I believe this is um, protein and it's 11 grams 400 grams so there's that we'll give it a try not sure if it's any good but i'll let you know this cheese is a french brand it's quite nice it's aged vegan cheese a small amount really goes a long way i've had this for a couple of months it's still good vegan cheese keeps for quite some time and it really brings this really nice cheesy flavor you don't have to use much, but it's quite nice to have around. And I use it for this kind of savory dishes or with pasta or with any cheesy sauces. And I'm also going to use this obviously in the mac and cheese. So I grated some of the vegan cheese and now I'm adding 200 milliliters of the soy cream. I'm going to add also a little bit of water because I want to get all the extra leftover soy cream in this carton. And then let's add some seasoning like salt and pepper before adding the rest of the ingredients. So this is what the tuna looks like, okay? It's actually quite good, I must say. Uh, it's really tasty. The only issue is it's quite, a, quite greasy. There's quite a bit of oil. So I'm going to try and fish out some of the tuna. No pun intended because this is a vegan channel. So get the actual tuna and get rid of the oil if possible because I don't want this to be a too too oily meal. So I did my best to get the tuna without the oil, not very successful, but now let's mix everything together alongside the tuna and the veggies. So now the stuffing is ready, let's get the pastry ready. I'm just going to uh, roll it out here and pinch the ends together to create some sort of a, a border to contain the stuffing. In the meantime, I'm preheating the oven at 180 Celsius and I'm just going to pinch all the edges together like so, just to make sure that they don't fall over as they heat up or burn too much. It's really not an exact science. It's not very fancy or pretty. It's home cooking, guys. Just get it done and move on, okay? I'm poking some holes in the pastry to let any hot air escape and I'm going to bake the pastry for 10 minutes before adding the stuffing on top. Once the pastry is beautifully golden like so, I'm just going to add all the stuffing, I'm going to lay it out evenly and return it to the oven for another 30 minutes when it should be done. There's the final result guys, it really was super amazing. In the meantime I prepared the salad, which will be the side, and I also blended the soup. Okay, so here's the result from today. The savory tart with the leftover veggies and some of that vegan cheese and vegan tuna. The roasted tofu with togarashi spice. This is a, a head preparation for the scrambled, not the scrambled, the stir-fried noodles tomorrow with tofu as a source of protein. Then I cleaned out all the salad that will be the side for the savory tart which is dinner and here is the soup that is now done and blended to be continued tomorrow here's a sneak peek of our dinner guys it was really excellent i'm so glad i could repurpose these uh, veggies in the way that i did and my husband really enjoyed this meal we had it with uh, in front of the tv watching some friends okay so for today i'm going to first boil the macaroni here i have some to boil. I soaked the beans over 
20 hours I would say. I usually soak them overnight but in this case I had a slow start to the day so there you go I'm going to boil them after the pasta because I need to use the same pot and then with the pasta I'm going to add towards the end I'm going to add the green peas that way we make a healthy mac and cheese and in the meantime let's get started with the actual sauce for the mac and cheese so I'm using a recipe I found online I'm going to link it in the description below I will use the soaked cashews now. So I boiled the pasta a few minutes less than the package called for because they're going to get baked as well and added the peas at the end. So all the ingredients here are ready for the cheese sauce and the pasta and uh, green peas are done. So the cheese sauce calls for a cup of soaked cashews with some water. Also, nutritional yeast, some mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, and cayenne pepper. So I'm going to mix everything in the blender and give it a taste test. And I'm also going to add some of the vegan cheese that I have. It's not in the recipe, but I still have some. I have to use it up and I think it will be a nice addition. So let's get blending. So this idea comes from a recipe I found online that I'm going to link be below. But as per the usual arrangement, I'm pretty much eyeballing everything, guys. Here I added a bunch of nutritional yeast, some of the garlic powder. I don't have any onion powder, so I added some fried onions I had and the all the rest of the spices that were in the recipe. I usually, when I look up a recipe, I kind of use it as an inspiration, but Overall, I do follow my instincts. I taste as I go. In this case, I had to add extra water to this cheese sauce because obviously probably the vegan cheese or the nutritional yeast required extra water. So what you're going to do? That's the way I, I like to cook and I hope it gives you some ideas. This cheese sauce turned out amazing, really good. I had to adjusted I added a little bit of water and adjusted it for some seasonings but other than that it's really good I also grated some vegan cheese on the veggies and the pasta so wow awesome maybe that's a little too much I don't know let's see let's mix and see So I have the beans here boiling. I'm going to add just some um, bay leaves and a little bit of salt. That's all the seasoning I'm adding. And then I can use them throughout the week. In the meantime, here I have to make some roasted panko crumbs and thyme. So basically, the recipe calls for a little bit of vegan butter in which we're going to come, we're going to toast the panko crumbs and the thyme and we're going to drizzle that on top of the mac and cheese and then there you go. And the oven is preheating, so I think it's going to be quite epic, guys. Not the healthiest of dishes, I must say, but I mean mac and cheese is not known for its health benefits, but you know, every once in a while, it's nice to have a nice meal. Voila, time. And let's add now the pan crumbs. I think we can use all, not sure. I was able to use up all the cheese sauce and all the homemade panko crumbs. I must say this recipe is really excellent, especially with the panko crumbs because it really adds a nice crispy touch. I just toasted them and now I'm just adding them on top of my uh, mac and cheese here and baking in the oven. Since the oven is on, I want to use it up to make that cake I wanted to use up the frozen berries for. Once again, I'm using my basic recipe. I'm adding here uh, one cup of milk with a little bit of vinegar. So I don't have apple cider vinegar. I'm using balsamic vinegar. I don't know if it works. 
did not look like it worked as per usual, but I had no apple cider vinegar. I'm going to use 200 grams of flour here, baking powder, baking soda, my vegan flax egg, as well as some oil and salt and sugar. In addition to the frozen berries I wanted to use up, I also have some uh, prunes that I got from the market. They were a gift from uh, the merchant, so I'm also going to use these up as a decoration on top of the cake. Okay, now let's add all the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. Mix everything nicely, add the berries and bake. It's a mixture that's really quick and easy to put together. If you have all the ingredients, just flour, some plant-based milk, baking powder, baking soda, and some oil and sugar. I didn't add any walnuts or chocolate chip. You could add anything really to this mix. And here's the result. So the mac and cheese is ready. I'm going to taste test it for you. I have the cake in the oven. So let's see what's up. I've never done this before. It smells decadent. It's still quite hot. Wow, it's really good. I highly recommend this recipe. I only used half the packet of macaroni and half the peas. It's really good. Mmm, amazing. Okay, I'm going to get my husband to come and try it because I think he will love it. And voila, enjoy. So this mac and cheese was a total winner. My husband really loved this dish. We ended up having it for lunch. The broccoli I meant to use for the noodles, I just steamed it as a side veggie for this lunch. So the cake is ready, cooling off on the rack. Smells really good. I think it's going to be amazing. And our beans, whew, hot, hot and steamy. They're all done. I'm going to freeze half the batch and the rest I'm going to use in a curry or something uh, of that sort for the week. Voila. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for me. So those are all the recipes I wanted to try today. There was also the stir-fried noodles that I didn't get to because we ended up having the broccoli with the mac and cheese. But anyway, let us now try this cake, guys. It is really good. I'm going to have some now with a little bit of soy yogurt that was my afternoon snack i hope you enjoyed this video like and subscribe and see you next week guys take care have a wonderful week bye now